Hey everybody. Thank you for coming to Popcorn 101. I'm Sam Sanders. I'm the Popcorn Colonel, the Council Popcorn Colonel. Um, this is the basic framework of the popcorn sale. So this is a how-to kind of uh, training, and Tony usually does it. Tony had a family event tonight, so he's going to try to make it at the back end of that. Um, but we've got Krista Dunn, uh, who is Bayside District Colonel, and we've got Matt Conway, who was our new Princess Anne uh, District Colonel that will be co-teaching today. Mm. So um, we ask if you can write down any questions you may have at the end. Uh, this is going to be a really fast training. We've got 26 slides and about an hour to go through it. So any questions, if you can hold off to the end, that might be great. If uh, you don't think you'll remember it, then we can make time for that. So um, anyway, so first up is going to be Matt. Well, I mean, you kind of just did the welcome to Popcorn 101 training. Uh, we're going to tag team the slides here, but welcome to Popcorn 101 for 2023. Uh, yeah. Any, everybody new? To popcorn, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Got something in front of her camera. Uh, so <laughs> these are our, the, the basic objectives. Uh, why do we sell? Uh, understand the budget and role in popcorn sales. Uh, what to do before the, the popcorn arrives. Uh, we're gonna go over the popcorn arrival dates and then what? Um, Lots of information for families, conducting popcorn kickoff and tasting event. Uh, how much popcorn should you pick up and order? Uh, accepting oh, credit cards, tools available like apps and Facebook page, unit incentives, conducting personal sales and how to set up and conduct a show and sell. And the importance of communication with popcorn chain of command, like your unit colonels, district colonels, council colonel, popcorn staff advisors. All of it's important. All of it. All right, so why do we do it? Obviously to raise money. Um, in my pack, personally, um, we raised so much money. We didn't, our kids didn't have to pay for anything this year. And we still have money left over. So uh, we went on a couple camping trips and paid for everything. Um, scouts earn prizes. The scouts get to build camaraderie. They learn communication skills, salesmanship. Um, they earn their own way. They build a foundation for their uh, Eagle pro project fundraising and they can earn advancement requirements. So, and they get to learn, you know, their inner voice instead of being this small little kid that can't really talk to anybody. They get to learn to find their inner voice. Um, I had a scout that wouldn't tell anybody, and now he can actually project and talk to people and look people in the eye. So, from being shy to being able to look at people, it you wouldn't know that it was the same kid. Uh, these are some of the uh, uh, requirements or electives that Cub Scouts can uh, can earn by selling popcorn. Uh, are we going through all of these? No. Or? no okay. To go in detail, this page is going to be in the popcorn guidebook when we release it later this summer. Awesome. And so these are some of the advancements that they can earn um, as a scout as part of the BSA. Uh, these are all the like council benefits from selling popcorn. So all the the money that um, that that you give to the council, it goes back to like uh, PepsiCo. It, they did two hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars, over two hundred sixty nine thousand dollars in uh, upgrades and beautification to uh, PepsiCo this last year. Like tent platforms. <laughs> oh, they don't have to slip on the ground anymore. <laughs> Um, so the budget, the importance of the budget covers unit activities and costs for the year. Parents want to know where their money goes. Um, I know when I started as a scout mom, um, I wanted to know what they were spending their money on. I came from being a, a Girl Scout mom to now being a, a Boy Scout, well, Cub Scout mom. So transparency is um, important. Uh, many ways to format a budget uh, through the pack tiers and identifies. Um, benefits at certain sale levels. And of course, popcorn kernels, treasurers, committee chairs, uh, cub and scout master relationships are important, so. So before the popcorn, uh, council leadership and council kernel meet with 
the vendor to establish a contract, which is uh, Pectonica for us. And um, around March, April, uh, unit kernels start making their plan. Obviously, you guys are new, so start making it now. But the um, like you're taking the the one on one training now. Um, then in the summer, you start to establish like your budget and your sales goals and uh, how much how much popcorn do you need to sell? And um, so we're going to uh, start putting out Lowe's dates next month, early next month. Uh, those will come out on Facebook. So you got to sign up for the uh, Tidewater Popcorn Kernel page. Anybody signed up on that yet? Yeah. Okay, we'll tell you how to do that then. Uh, so those are the two specific dates they're coming out on June 5th and June 12th. The main, yeah, the main, uh, the first, first set will come out on the 5th and then um, uh, the second round will come out on the 12th. Yeah, so on the 5th, um, each unit will be able to pick one date um, and that date is going to be in the first part of the sale. So um, August, maybe the first weekend of September, um, we are releasing them early this year because we want you guys to be able to plan ahead for placing your first order. So you know if you have one in August or not. Um, after you get that first date um, sometime between the 5th and the 11th, um, whatever is still open after that, that's when we're going to be opening those up um, starting on the 12th. And then um, following the popcorn training on um, July 18th will be the next release date. Um, we'll open some up for later in the season. Um, we just want to make sure everyone has a chance to get to training and still get a low date um, if perhaps they haven't heard that we're going to do that early release in June. And then, uh, so then in July, you should hold your unit kickoff party. Um, that's when like you'll you'll lay out the plan for all your units and you can have a tasting so all the kids and parents too they can get a taste of what popcorn they have out uh so while they're selling it really you know gives them a lot of uh like oh this is my favorite or oh this you know i really like this one it helps them sell it if they know what it tastes like um and then you can hand hand out all the supply like um the sign for the or your yard or money envelopes you got order forms a large um, money envelope for to put all your money in and a tasting kit and then you can submit your first order for all your popcorn uh for show and sales and uh door-to-door -door sales personal sales um one thing i wanted to mention is for that kickoff party what somebody had done that was really cool is they had little snack bags and put a couple you know you know your snack your sample box is really not huge, but it gives you an idea of some of the items in there. So they put like, you know, three or four in there. And so they could taste some of the ones that were coming out. So that was kind of fun for them. We get the little uh, Dixie cups and we'll put like two or three kernels in each one and mm -hmm. have the kids come up and they can grab mm -hmm. them and slam them back. They will ask you what your favorite type of popcorn is. The customers were well, sometimes they will buy it for you. So it's good to know what your child likes if you do decide to keep it. So the other thing is, is know what is in the popcorn, whether it's gluten free, not gluten free, if it has nuts, if it doesn't have nuts, if it has peanut butter, because your customers are allergic. Your kids are allergic, so it's good to know and all of your popcorns come with a handy dandy little um, in, ingredient guide. So they're always right on top of your popcorn. So, or you can Google it too. Mm -hmm. So this is always very handy to have. Usually the order form also will have the markers for the ones that are um, gluten-free. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of our, uh, keys to success last year for getting us over the $1 million mark was having all four orders submitted two weeks prior to arrival for each date. Um, I know my pack only did three of the four and we still tripled our original from uh, the year prior. Um, the first Thursday in August, our semi tractor trailer arrives, the first product order. If you help unload it, you get your product and you get to go. Otherwise, you have to wait till the next day to get your product. So if you're able to get people in here to help unload it, um, you get to get your product and you get to go. 
So it's always helpful to have people in here to help unload it. And it's, it's a crazy, lot. It's a lot. but it's a lot. Um, subsequent orders arrive early September, early October and mid November. Um, and then if you pay for it in advance when it's ordered, all the payments are due, you get to have a little special. Pam excitement <laughs> and, and Allison excitement. And they're excited. The mid November one, you have to pay for that one. In advance, you get to advance. December. Yeah. yeah. All the rest of them, you order them and then you pay for them before the next one comes in. Yeah. November one, you have to pay for it ahead of time. And then, um, but all, all, all your bills have to be current mm. before you can get that pop order. Yep. Otherwise, you get Allison nasty grams. Mm. <laughs> so, for your kickoff party, um, you want to plan this with your unit before submitting your, your first order, obviously, so you know how much. Um, but it also uh, helps to have a selling strategy in place. Starting early is the success. You should start now um form a popcorn crew if you have a if you have a big a big unit um our our unit is pretty small i think we only have 15 to 20 kids but if you have a really large unit have a um your colonel and treasurer should always work together anyway but have a show and sell crew or an inventory crew just people to track other things um do a taste testing that's you know part of your kickoff party uh, make it fun for the kids and form it for the parents. We always tie it in with something like a rocket rally where we make, you know, rockets ahead of time or we'll do a um, bring a regatta or we had a camp out last last year. It was terrible because it was so hot and all our popcorn is melting. <laughs> uh, use the popcorn guide as your reference. You guys have the download the popcorn guide? It is not available yet, oh, but okay. it will be um, prior to the July popcorn greetings. Oh. And I'm going to tell you this. For those of you that are new that have never done this, I was there. I didn't have any guide. I didn't have any help. That is your Bible. Mm -hmm. Highlight it. This is the same. I just print it out and put it in a binder. I have little tabs about everything, and I referenced it every time. And then if I couldn't find something or I needed help, um, I would call Pam. Crying, well, but I tell you to call district colonels. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't really have one that was helpful, yeah, so right. I called Pam. But I'm your district colonel for um, Norfolk. Call me. I've been there, done that. I swear it's not that bad. <laughs> um, but that is your Bible. It's really easy. It's easy to follow. It's not that hard, and it's not that bad. I promise. Uh, also, discuss uh, what your scouts should say to the customer. Always be polite. My my son has gotten so many people to turn around from a no just because he's like, all right, well, thank you. Have a nice day. And they're like, head drop and come back. Larry, what's your cheapest one? And But he, he's got a lot of sales with that. Um, uh, discuss use of show and sell tracker and credit card app. Uh, that's you'll have like a, a paper to, you know, track your sales, you know, wh while you're at the show and sell. Um, so, you know, you're not pulling stuff out the last minute, like, oh no, where'd all this money go? Or where'd all my popcorn? Um, and will, will scouts get credit for their shift? Are you splitting up the whole day? Like, well, you, you know, you worked, you know, three shifts, you know, you get three shifts, you know, three, eight so whatever you know we sold all day or um however you want to split it up like that we usually just do uh whatever wherever they sold for their shifts but. so that that's up to each unit to decide how they want to credit from a show and sell um some units say you earn credit for exactly what you sold some units say we're going to take the whole day's worth of sales and divide it out amongst the scouts evenly because some shifts are better than others um, and if you ended up getting the worst shift, but you kept the booth open for an extra hour so the good shift behind you could come, you know, there might be merit in that as well. Um, we are not going to tell you how to divide that credit out, but make sure that your parents know what the plan is because um, you don't want to get someone upset on the back end after they say, well, I sold 400 in my shift. Why did my kid only get 300 worth? Um, so just make sure all the parents are on the, the same page and are aware of what the unit's plan is. 
And there's a couple of things I want to tag in off of this is with your selling strategy. Um, each unit's going to be different. Some units will just want to sell online. OK, and that's as far as they want to go. So when you have your committee meeting, uh, June or July, you need to see what your parent buying is with this. Are they willing to go sit a table? Are they willing to walk the neighborhood? That's going to go ahead and gauge how much you're going to order. Um, you're also going to need to check them out with the, with the parent, you know, make sure they don't sit on it for too long and then you forget about it. So you get like a receipt book. So these kind of things, when we talk about your strategy, each you, each unit is going to be different, you know. Uh, we my unit was very much a show and sell unit. We would go out every weekend and do that. Um, and the earlier you go, the more popcorn you're going to want because people are actually waiting for this. They love Boy Scout popcorn, <laughs> and August is really, really a good month to get involved. So the earlier you get out, the better. Can you go back one more slide for a second? Um, and as far as the scouts getting credit, however your unit decides to do that, um, Tony recommends that you go ahead and send them an email that day saying how much their scout was credited. And on your order form, you can go ahead and keep tabs, you know, June 1st, Tommy made $200. And then that way, when it comes to the end and you see how much your scout actually has accrued towards prizes, you have the same numbers that your just, you know, your unit colonel does. You know, I don't know if you're a treasurer here or committee chair or the popcorn colonel, but um, keeping track of it that way is really, really super easy. So, OK, sorry. Um, so some important information for parents, check items checked out to families through a receipt book or text. Um, I personally have a sheet that I track all my scouts through because um, not only am I the Cub Master, but I'm also the popcorn kernel and the district popcorn kernel. So I kind of have to do it all. Um, 30 days to sell it or return it. So make sure that they understand that. Uh, returns are a financial loss if not sold or donated. Uh, they do not get to return if the popcorn, uh, they do not get returned to the popcorn company, especially the chocolate if it fails the bulk test. So if it's been melted, and it congeals and it goes bonk instead of being shaky, 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 um, <laughs> then it doesn't get returned. Yes. That's referencing council not being able to return it. Units can return. If council doesn't accept it, you get to buy it. Right. But I mean, yeah, so we yeah. the damage popcorn. Yeah. Um, so for those who are the popcorn, yeah. for those who are returning, our return policy is going to be very similar to last year. Um, for those who are new, the council will accept limited returns, accept damaged items, um, chocolate lovers are not returned. Some of the other products have specific deadline dates. Um, we're going to go over all the specifics on the 2023 sale at those July trainings, so please make sure that you sign up for those if you have not already. Um, but yes, Tom, you are correct. Um, Tidewater Council cannot return any popcorn to Pecatonica. So once we order it, we order it. Um, so that that's what we mean by a financial loss. We're all going to be fiscally responsible with scouting's resources. Um, so the council cannot return any popcorn to the company, and there will be limited returns for units to be able to return to the council. The key is just management on the unit level and the council level, because if we know where you guys are kind of sitting and, you know, kind of have feedback from you, then that helps gauge what we do on our end. Is the guide or? What items need climate control and which ones don't? Chocolate. Thing with the word chocolate. Or anything that has chocolate that's not yeah. named chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> um, for example, there's something called sea salt splash, and it is it has chocolate in it. Um, you wouldn't necessarily know that, so definitely um, we can go over that in the other training. And you are in Bayside, it looks like. Yeah. Um, so Krista mm -hmm. is your district colonel, and she can definitely um, talk you through any of that when ordering and all that it's stuff. Be well. the guy. It'll say that there is chocolate on the order form. Mm -hmm. It'll say like, oh, it's luscious chocolate enrobing a, <laughs> a salted caramel popcorn. Um, but that that's a good suggestion, and we can probably yeah, add that we'll to the guide. Training board. Um, personally, I just keep the the chocolate yeah. stuff rotating so it never sits out very long 
but there's everybody has a million and one suggestions on how to keep it climate controlled. So definitely um, maintain neat records. Uh, you will have to submit copies of your order forms to the winner's circle. So the thing that I made every scout that you have to submit anything above what 1750 I think isn't it? No, it's three three thousand winners. So the winner circle, yeah. So anything over three thousand, you have to submit their records proving that they made over three thousand dollars. So, um, and that includes their donations. Their donations go um, towards their sales. So you have to submit their donations as well. So um, donations are not counted against you. They're for you and they're for the scouts. So they're gonna um, count your donations too. Um, parents need orders to the colonel prior to these dates they're going to all be in the guide highlight them put them in your phone put them on your calendar that's how i keep track of all my stuff um so contact your parents for their personal orders before each order is placed to ensure adequate supplies on hand and do not tap into your show and sale popcorn to satisfy your take orders unless necessary utilize the uh, unit to unit transfer so that's where facebook comes in um hey does anybody have Three chocolate lovers. You'll be surprised at who still has three chocolate lovers that they haven't been able to get rid of for three weeks. It's also a good practice for your scouts when they're taking orders. Since you know all of our delivery dates, they can say to their customer, I will have this popcorn to you on October 10th. Um, that way, the customer who thinks maybe they're coming back tomorrow really knows what to expect and then will be happier overall with the, the service that the unit gives them. What you want to do before the order is placed is give your parents a deadline of one or two weeks ahead of time to have them bring in their pre-orders to incorporate into your order. So anything that comes in after that, that's when you'll put it on the next order. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, you're looking at how much you should get. Um, look at what was sold last year. If you have the records from the previous popcorn kernel from your unit. Um, but based it on what what your plan is for the selling season, um, do you have a lot of show and sell scheduled? Uh, do you have parents that want to walk the neighborhoods with their scouts to you know take popcorn with them? Um, do you have a lot of parents that take order forms to work to try to pawn it off on their on their uh, coworkers? Um, make sure you have um money in your your unit's bank account to be able to cover at least six percent of the the first order um you'll make it back in august selling but um just in case you know worst case scenario have it um but you have plenty of opportunity to sell off your first order so get for august the first order get a a pretty big pretty big order so uh you have enough last year i i thought i ordered enough i had I think it was about eleven thousand dollars worth of popcorn, and we we sold out almost that first weekend. Yeah, we sold. Uh, I think we did. I think I ordered like seventy five, which was over our overall from the previous year, and we did sell out yeah. in that first two weeks. And two of my boys hit winter circle in two weeks. Two of my boys hit winter circle twice overall. So it's not hard to do. So there's a couple things to mention here. So 60 percent is due council within that first month. And the reason is because we have a bill coming in from Pecatonica. So if we don't pay our bill, we get a late fee, and that's a problem. That's a problem to you know try to keep our our good 40 percent going along the way if we can't pay our bills. So what we're saying is 60 percent plan on that. You know, there is those there are those weekends where we might get a hurricane in and nobody's out like we had that last year. They said a hurricane's coming and everybody says we're not selling, we're not selling, we're not selling. It was a beautiful day. I don't know if you guys remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Welcome to Hampton Roads, right? So um, there's that possibility, too. So and on top of it, we had a lot of units last year, a lot of new popcorn kernels coming in. We kept telling if you have a Lowe's. Plan on ordering what fifteen hundred to two thousand mm -hmm. more, um, and they're like, I don't know about that. So council ordered fifty thousand dollars in extra popcorn, just in case people are a little light. We went through that in two weeks. 
<laughs> and everybody's scurrying around. I'm thinking, you got this, you got this, you got this. So what I'm saying is, you know, order heavy on the front end because you have three months to sell that off. Okay. And if you can't, you can shuffle it off to another unit, but make sure of that heavy order, you can still pay your bill. And if you're going out there selling, believe me, in August, you will be fine. You will be fine. So that's kind of what we need you to do as far as management on your end so we can keep it the flow coming through on our end. The reason why it's 60 percent is like Matt mentioned earlier, we've got one of the highest commissions in the nation. Um, your unit is keeping 40 percent of retail sales. Um, so 60 percent of whatever you check out retail is going to be what your bill is. Um, and then that 40 percent, you'll you'll just keep it when you have that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention when we said look at what was sold last year, I know a lot of you here are new. If you don't know what was sold last year, then reach out to your district colonel or reach out to Pam or reach out to me and we will get those records for you. Let me hear you. Oh, um, <laughs> ADD kicked in. Sorry. How much did I really get? All of it, get it all. Um, ten percent classic caramel, ten dollar classic caramel is always your biggest seller because they look at the price and they're like, ah. Okay, so here's the cool thing. Um, yeah, Girl Scout cookies are four dollars a box. Do you know they only get forty cents? Whereas we get forty percent, and that stays with your troop or your pack. So yeah, it seems like a big sticker shock. I was kind of shocked when I found out first too. But guess what? Ten dollars classic caramel delicious and we knocked all the calories and fat out of it yeah 22 2022 council sales is approximately 25 percent of that ten dollars um troop that, that was tony's example oh from that's tony sorry <laughs> troop of 13 scouts sold 177 of 2116 cans that's a little over eight percent camera with sea salt another favorite you're looking at nine percent Pick up all the flavors of at least one of each of the top three non-returnables. That's your uh, classic trio, which is that one, your um, cheese lovers and your chocolate lovers, and you'll sell it or transfer it to another unit. Last year, it was super easy to sell the cheese lovers because, oh, we had buffalo ranch, um, jalapeno, and cheese, and they'd be like, oh, I want to. Well, you know what? For the price of those two, you can get cheese lovers bam mm -hmm. nothing goes better with cheese jalapeno or uh buffalo ranch and sunday football <laughs> um so tony's unit in 2020 2021 2022 respectively chocolate lovers you can see that cheese lovers and it's trio cheese and trio usually returnable for a limited time when in doubt talk to your district colonel for guidance we usually don't steer you wrong um note do not let meltables chocolate pretzels mud puddles etc melt store in your house not your garage um products are subject to the thunk test upon return so think of it like a chunk of ice if it goes thunk like in a you have ice in there yes so if it I'm doesn't that shake close. like that <laughs> I was like, I was like, I hope that's close. <laughs> it looks close. <laughs> if there's no big chunk and it yeah. stays, you know, shaky, shaky, you're good. Yeah. Because we shake them when you bring them back at the end of the year. We've had some people that have put the stuff in their car um, during work and then, you know, expect it was going to be fine. No, no, it's not. It's not it's going to be for sure. Police yeah. Royal Store kid. Huh? Police store where you'll store it. You kidding me? I'll store my kid in the car. Yeah. He's 11. Guys, <laughs> uh, yeah, throw, throw one thing on that. Yeah. When you're trying to protect the can, I saw this happen. The, you know, good intentions. They put it in a cooler. You don't take rusty cans back either. Sure. Yeah, so one of the easiest ways to keep the things cool is to just go ahead and put water in a bottle and freeze it. Uh, one of the other reasons to not have it floating in water is that uh, if the bag is a little compromised, then they'll have wet popcorn. But on top of it, you can't see the dietary stuff on the label because it'll get all messy. So, um, you know, just cooler packs, bottles with water. That's usually the best way to do it. 
Yeah, I bought one once that had water in the bottom of the tin, so I know what you're talking about. So <laughs> not loose water, but ice packs are great. Mm -hmm. uh, using credit card apps like um, Square or uh, Zettel or something, something around there. Uh, use your um, your unit's EIN and name on the bank account. Don't use your personal because you will get a 1099 form for anything over. I think it's like six hundred dollars mm -hmm. total th throughout the season. We got one. Was that 2020? Yeah, everybody got surprised. It was when they changed the restriction. Yeah, they, twenty thousand, and they reduced it to yeah. six hundred. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun. Fun yeah. doing that that year. So you uh, wanted to go to your your chartered organization under your unit. Most of them are nonprofits themselves, and they don't really have to worry about extra income. You do not want an extra twenty thousand dollars of income coming on your own name and being reported to the IRS. The, the problem we had with that last year was that our yeah. charter organizations, the EIN, does not match the bank account name on our bank account. Um, so our club master did put in her personal social. Mm -hmm. um, her accountant just backed it out. But um, how do we, if the bank account doesn't match the name to the EIN, how do we get around that? You have to fix your bank account for the steps. Well, yeah. that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> Um, talk to you're in what Princess Anne? Yes. Okay. So Tom is a great resource on financial matters in Princess Anne. Yeah. Uh, but also you can talk to to Rich Becker and he can help you kind of talk to your um to your chartered org and help get that stuff straight. Now he's your district executive. All right. I'm kind of to the point where I think we just need to create a new or open a new bank account because there's like a John Smith that nobody that opened it and the bank always wants to talk to John Smith and nobody knows who John Smith All is. Of it. He never transferred over somebody the when he left he never said oh this is the person that's taking over the the bank account we're we're kind of going through the same thing in our unit okay um so BSA does not endorse any credit processing vendors, whatever, whatever one works for you guys. Just uh, don't put it on your personal one. Just yeah, have, have, have like a unit login for it and mm -hmm. have people log into it when they come in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that different phone. Oh, uh, so make make sure that whatever you're using is going to work for the people running the booth. Um, so if you've got a mix of, say, Android and Apple users, make sure that you've got something that whoever is there is going to be able to do. Uh, most most app, we always use Square. I think Tony uses Zettle. Uh, you can input that card info manually. Um, you don't have to have um, like a, a Bluetooth receiver or the swipe thing. Um, the the companies they take a cut they take a certain percentage square it varies um day to day and sometimes it's three percent sometimes it's four or anything in between it uh, so account for that but we we used to not have any credit card um uh apps or anything like that so people would be like oh i don't have cash and we're kind of out on a sale there so we kind of see it as you know yeah we got to pay the credit the company a little bit but we're also getting you know where we wouldn't have this twenty dollars sale, we're getting seventeen dollars on it or something like that. It kind of works its way, works itself out. I think the last time we asked, people said they got about forty percent more sales when they accepted credit cards. Oh, yeah, I would yeah. six. Months. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot. We have uh, Apple Pay, Zelle, Venmo. Uh, we'll take Cash App. We'll even take Facebook Pay. And you have all those in the packs then. No. That's what I thought. <laughs> However, since I'm leaving, we will be creating packs. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> After this popcorn season. Because I remember taking a couple of cash outs and that's all they had. And then I took the my I I transferred it, it over. Yeah. Yes. Then I transferred it over. Okay. Yeah. A couple of times, yeah. Uh also verify your sales on your app um throughout the day. And also your cumulative at the end of the day, uh, just to verify, you know, the sales actually went through or, you know, you weren't double tapping, uh, robbing people. The, um, the last time that I, I did sales and the tracker that we had, had the, the name of the person, um, what they purchased, and then the last four on their credit card and the time. And 
the reason why it was on there is because if for some reason it doesn't go through, you have a way to track it that way. So I would say if you can avoid having to put in people's numbers manually, that costs a little bit more on some apps, but also it's a trust factor, I think, with some people that when you're going ahead and actually putting it on your phone like that, uh, it, it's just a little unsettling to some people. So if there's any way you can do the tap or whatever, just to, to streamline it, much better for the customer. I mean, we're scouts, we're trustworthy, but still that's their credit card. That's their number getting out there. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, so sign up to Tidewater Council Popcorn Kernel Facebook group. Um, they'll have the Lowe's release dates, product swaps, real time updates. So if somebody says, hey, I've got a place on Friday from 4 to 8 that I can't do and you don't have a place from 4 to 8 on Friday and you need some scouts to go do it. There you go. You've got some place you can go um, and it may not be Lowe's. It may be Bob's. Superior Ron, right, or a gun shop or whatever. You know, you got people find places that you wouldn't normally think about. And now you have a new spot that, you know, you got. So um, keep, keep uh, district and council informed of plans of excess inventory. Matt last year helped me out with, I don't know, not very much, but there was, I just had a little extra inventory <laughs> at the end of the year. <laughs> Called it off on him. We were taking the shift after the, uh, the NOB next. And she's like, you want this? I'm not, I'm not selling anymore. We're oh, done. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, well, because we were pretty much done. It was almost Halloween. We were going camping, and we were done for the year. And he's like, sure. So, hey, go. Merry Christmas. Um, don't order more if you have large enough sur surplus of planned sales. Exchange with other units. Use a kernel tracker. Um, build or acquire a sales inventory tracker. Um, I'd have to scan those, but I have, I have stuff that I've... Uh, created over the past couple of years of doing this um, and it works really well for me um, but I don't mind sharing uh, notify parents of your scouts credits after showing sales they really want to know and that gives the kids oh I'm $25 from the next prize or I'm pumps those little kids up um then they can add line items to their scouts orders, forms, documents, um, their credits for their sales events. Um, documentation of each scout sales will be required for the winter circle prizes. So. so with that also, that kind of when you let them know how much they sold, you're also it's it's kind of a backup tracker for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Like I'll I'll track it on paper, I'll track it in Excel, and then I give everything to the parents so they can also track it. So at the end of the year, like, hey, your son should have three thousand dollars in, you know, popcorn. So they're like, oh, I only have twenty four hundred. Like, why is that? But it helps. Your numbers should jive, but you know, whenever. Uh, unit incentives using your method for extras like summer camp registration, etc. They we always had like, oh, you know, your your cross all your crossover stuff, you know, at you know seven hundred fifty. That's all. <laughs> Uh, we had a tier two where you know all your all your outings were were paid for at a certain level. Or tier three was, oh, you got two hundred dollars for a scout account for that you can use for um, uh, like summer camp or anything scout related, pretty much. Um, so that's that's kind of incentive more for parents, I guess, but also for the kids. Like, hey, you're at tier two, bud. Um, but for unit prizes for certain sales goals in between the council prizes, um, I think those those are from last year, the 750. Yeah, uh, these are new suggestions. But oh. we're gonna we're having a meeting next week to finalize our prizes, so those will be in the popcorn guide for what we're providing. Yeah. So then, um, try to fill in fill in the gaps in between council prizes. Try to you know small ladder rungs so they they can see how much they're like, oh, I'm doing really good and getting all these prizes and it makes them want to sell more. Um, Tony does like a grab bag with uh, some prizes in it, or you can have a pizza party for a whole unit goal or pie in the face. Uh, not with a uh, not with pie, pie tins, you got to use paper plates because they love that. Somebody would give them face a <laughs> um, You can get uh, your 
your pack or troops t-shirt or a hoodie. We had uh we had one at I got this from 700. The ice water shower for the popcorn kernel. I've gotten a couple of those past couple of years. Uh, kids kids like that. Luckily they like to put lots of ice in it too. So <laughs> this unit was the top three selling unit, Princess Anne. Um, they well exceeded their goal. They have a very vigorous incentive program, uh, but it showed in the end by what they pulled in as far as numbers. So uh, he wanted us, you know, he said that was fine for us to show his um, incentive program to you guys. So, yeah, but this is not um, the council incentives. This is from a previous year, so it's going to be different this coming year, um, but it's a good example of the way that in between each prize that was provided to them, they added something else to help the kids fill that gap and, and be inspired to, you know, oh, I'm only 50 away. I can do the next thing. Does this Ted's farm or your farm? Um, this is, I believe Chris Silman mm -hmm. made this one. Yeah. Um, so this is what they handed out to their pack. So we're just um, showing it as an example of a way that you can present prizes to your unit. Yeah, I was wondering if we could get that Excel sheet. I think they, I think he, oh, the last year he put it up um, for. On the Facebook page. Yeah, uh, I think it was off on the council, the, page, uh, council page. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it was next to like the, the Excel file that Tony uploaded. And yeah, after we finalize ours at that meeting next week, maybe we should have them update to what the council ones are and then share it out. So you don't have to change the stuff that, that we know is changing. So last year, my, my pack was um, the $200 was a t-shirt that had, um, we had dinosaurs on it and it, all the vinyl glowed in the dark. Um, this was our selling t-shirt. Um, so uh, my pack went from three to six to now we're at 20. So I had, um, and we've always been, with the three, even at the six, we were one of the top per scout. So um, last year we sold every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I had some very tired little boys, including mine. Um, but then we also got them um, camping chairs and one of their incentives was uh, their dues were paid. One of the biggest things is none of them go to camp because they one parent has four kids and the dad works. I'm a single mom, so I can't take them to camp. Um, so they don't do a lot of camp um, in the summertime, but their dues get paid and that's a big thing. So that was one of the big incentives for uh, last year. Um, but like I said, I had two, two boys hit the winter circle twice. So they made um, the 5,000, they made 2,500, 5,000 and anything in between. So 3,000, 4,000 and 6,000, they got $100 gift cards on top of all of that. Um, so we talked a little bit earlier about budgeting. Um, so when you look at those incentives, like how much do dues really cost, then build that into your budgeting process. Um, if you want to pay for day camp for kids, then build that into the budget and then you can divide that out by how many scouts are selling and come up with sales goals for each family um, and then help build that whole structure that's going to work for you guys. Um, for personal sales, you can do uh, door to door. Best to have product in hand so you can just drag around a wagon and be like, oh, well, I have. That's awesome. They yeah. love that. Yeah, yeah that's uh, well, it's easier to pass it's... the wagon around to the families in the in oh, our okay. pack. Yeah, well, not everybody's got a red wagon. But... Yeah, <laughs> but it's kind of instant gratification for them. They don't have to wait. You know, um, if you have like if you looked into the future and, you know, got enough uh, popcorn to to have that, you know, on hand that you can hand out to families and they can just check out some, uh, but keep the chocolate products cool. Have a put them in a either put them in a cooler or, you know, tell them leave them at the house and say, oh, I'll, I'll be right back. I have to go back and get it so it didn't melt. Um, take your order forms to work and have coworkers buy it. Um, friends, neighbors, local family members. Uh, Anybody out of the area, they can also buy online. Um, you'll end up setting up uh, the accounts. So each kid has their own um, seller ID. Seller ID, yeah. I was trying to get a word. <laughs> um, 
we we only get a 30 percent commission on the online sales um but, but it's free delivery free delivery and, and it's no work to you it's easy it's different product it is different, different product. product yes so the mm -hmm. chocolate will not ship until the fall right so they yeah. order in august and you wondering where their chocolates are yeah, we now we did a problem with that in the past. I, I think you probably were involved with that. So with the past, there wasn't anything on their website that said anything about delayed chocolate. So they have started putting it on there to give people a projection as to when it's going to be able to ship out of Wisconsin. So um, if they order, they should see that red banner on top. So just let them know to look for it. Uh, even online sales count toward uh, your scouts prize total. So even though we only get 30% commission that, you know, $40 or whatever, however much they sold still goes toward their their overall sales goals for the year. So I believe what Tony meant by emails from Pops is that the district colonel who is set up in the online system is the colonel for that unit will get an email from mm -hmm. Pops. I think it's at PRPopcorn.com or PecatonicaRiverPopcorn.com telling you that they made a sale. Um, that, and that's how you fill that in on your tracker when you're submitting for prizes. Now you know how much they have. Mm -hmm. um, you can also pull reports online. And then those seller IDs will also come from that automatic email. So if they don't get it, have them check spam because 90% of the time that's where it's at. I couldn't get it to pull up on the tracker, but I got the emails all the time. So I had one one little boy that sold, I don't know, $1,500 online, wow. but he, uh, I never got it on the tracker, but I got all the emails. Okay. Um, so uh, show and sell, selling in front of, a business or at an event in public, talk to the store manager to set up, have paper trail of booking, confirmation, resolve conflicts professionally, um, and understand and follow their rules. Ask parents for places where they might have connections. Um, Cubs work in pairs with two parents so that if one little boy has to, or girl, sorry, um, has to go to the bathroom, one parent could take them, and that way you have a one somebody's still man in the booth um certain companies are restricted like home depot and wawa um break out the bling your unit flag tablecloth homemade de decorations etc keep multiples cool bring membership flyers joining information i always have a stack of the um be a scout um cards um and if they ask about it then i just put our information when we meet a uh, phone number um, so you can just put your Cub Masters information or whatever on the back. Keep a notebook with several order forms to show products, tracking sheet, money envelope for each shift, money box uh, with petty cash and credit card device. Um, if you have two shifts going, you need two money boxes going. We had two shifts going uh, last year. We had to have two money boxes, so make sure you have that. Uh, track inventory through the sales. Uh, scout sales can get lost if cash credit sales is not documented correctly. So make sure that that gets done correctly. So when you show up at a Lowe's, you're going to go to the customer service desk and just say, hi, my name's Pam Samples. I'm with PAC 585. Where would you like me to set up? OK, um, inevitably, they're always going to tell you the exit, you know, and at a certain place it, and you'll get used to that. But they always just want you to check in, you know, um, and you know, sometimes you might split a shift with somebody. So it might be my unit and then it might be your unit for the other half of the day. When you come in, you also just check in and just it's just good protocol. And that's what they ask you to do. Most of them do. Um, there was one other thing I was going to mention. When, and don't crowd the door. Yeah, that's just not. Usually you let them go in and then as they come out, that's when you approach them because if you <clears throat> mention something to them going in and coming out it's it's like too much you know so that's how we do it and there's a secret button if they come in the exit which is always fun <laughs> the kids love that stuff but, okay Um, so this is Tony's example of his show and sell tracker. Um, I think Krista handed out yeah, a version as well. Um, so you can build one yourself. You can borrow one from another unit. Um, 
pretty much everybody is happy to share because a lot of people have put a lot of hard work into these. I'm sure Tony's willing to share his as well. Um, so just let us know, let your district colonel know if you need help getting that um, set up. I think that was also one that we. Uh, yeah, that was shared. The council did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then here's his example of what he would do for one scout. So that looks a little different from his show and sell one. Too fast. <laughs> you want to go back? The next break. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Got it. <laughs> so for my scouts, if they worked um, a four hour shift, they would split it equally. If one worked four and one worked eight, then Mathematically, they would get the one that worked eight would get, and it was a total of an eight hour shift. He would get 50%, the other one would get 25%. Good eight hour shift. Yeah. Fine. Um, I had my I had my son who's been in it since he was a tiger. Um, he was actually working six hour shifts. Um, unfortunately, in order for us to get what we needed, he'd have to work it. There's a lot of bribing going on. <laughs> So he's now an ALL. So yeah, when you're the scouts and the, the when you're popcorn son, yeah, you get stuck doing a lot of things you don't want to do. But he now has to do true popcorn instead of cup popcorn. So the first thing, um, okay, so here's your district popcorn kernels. Um, two of them are right here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, each one of the districts have two. Albemarle is kind of like the lone scout out there. Uh, they kind of do their own thing. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and release those dates for uh, the lows on June 5th and then the remaining ones on June 12th. We're asking you to stay in your district lines with that, which means if you're Princess Anne district, you'll stay in Virginia Beach lows, uh, which is Holland. Uh, it is Virginia Beach Boulevard, and we also have a superior gun. If you're Bayside, that is Military Highway. And if you're Three Rivers, that would be Victory Lows and Portsmouth Lows um, and Battlefield. OK, so after we do these releases of the June dates, or I'm sorry, the August dates after the training, which you guys still need to go to because that is specific stuff with this year, we're still honing in on how exactly we're rolling things out and still getting information from Pecatonica. So we don't have everything for you to, you know, today. So in July, make sure you sign up for one of those trainings to go to. After those trainings, we will be releasing the September, October, and any remaining August dates. Okay. And then we will be going open district after that. Yes. Yes. Um, Which means you can go ahead if you're in Three Rivers, you can go into Virginia Beach. What we're asking you guys to do is when you sign up for a Lowe's, you go and you see you are not getting parental support to fill up your shift. You know, we're doing it half day shifts. That makes it easier. If, you, if you're not going to be able to make it, if you see everybody's got a baseball game that weekend and you didn't plan on it, please release that out on the Facebook page ASAP at least one week in advance. Because when we get these people releasing Lowe's the day before, we're sitting on empty lows and that's just a waste. OK, and, you know, we can't have people just start, you know, there will be a protocol as far as if people start, you know, um, dropping lows without any advance notice kind of thing, because we just can't afford to leave the lows open. You know, uh, they're a great opportunity. So um, if you can't do it, please open that opportunity up for another uh, unit to do so. Um, we have a few units from Albemarle online, um, so just so you guys know, we do not have the Lowe's in North Carolina booked. Um, so you you can approach them directly um, at this time. We don't in the future. You know, that may be something that we look into trying a little harder to being the ones to manage that, um, but we don't have that relationship there right now. So everybody, if you've got Facebook, um, and if you are not on the popcorn kernel page, let me tell you how to make that request now. If you go to Tidewater Council popcorn kernels, and you go ahead and click join, that will let me know that you would like to get access to. That. I need to know who you are. It's a big group. Oh, um, that's why I didn't get approved yet. That's why, yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, there's a question like, you know, who are you? What do you want? To, why do you want this page? You know, something like that. Uh, please answer it. OK, because uh, I don't go ahead and accept until uh, we know who you are, because we've got right now 250 people on there. We need to start figuring out who's the old people that are not in there anymore and, and the new people. So once you do that, um, I will go ahead and accept it. And then that is where you will go ahead and find out if there's an open load. You will find out if somebody's sitting on a case of caramel sea salt that lows that you would like to go ahead and release and you do not have you know the, the rental support behind that just say i have lows on this date available and please instant message me you know um do not just put it out there i've got holland lows you know august 2nd at seven o'clock or whatever because we will have four units converging upon that and it's going to be a mess so what it is, it's a agreement between your unit and whoever else is going ahead and doing it. It's not just to be put out there, a blanket statement, and then we've got four or five units. We're trying to avoid uh, competitiveness among units and the lows like the fact that we are taking all these dates and handing it out to one unit and one unit and it doesn't fall to them anymore. Yeah. So we just want to avoid the uh, any kind of, you know, issue going on with that. So with the uh, Albemarle uh, Lowe's um, get an email saying when you when you have a date scheduled for that show and sell because like all the all the ones in Tidewater area we have a paper trail of like well no I'm signed up for this date it's the help um, combat over for double booking or arguments that lead to double booking uh, so try to get a, a email chain or a paper paper trail for that. Mm -hmm. Right, and that that's for any show and sell. So if you call Tractor Supply tomorrow and they say, yes, you can do it, send the store manager an email back and say, thank you so much for allowing us to sell on Saturday, August 7th from, you know, 8 a.m. to noon or whatever it is. Put it in writing. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you have that communication going with the store manager. And if something happens where there is a double booking, it happens. There's, you know, some stores have three or four managers mm -hmm. and they've not communicated. Resolve it peacefully between the units, because if you bring issues like that to store managers, they're going to start saying no to every pack and every troop because they don't want us to be a hassle. Mm -hmm. That may mean you might have to walk away. You know, if you guys can't come to an agreement, somebody's got to walk away. So relative to the lows on Facebook, is there a, is it in a room where you can go and see everyone's schedule? What we'll do is on June 5th, we will release the August dates. We will have links. So there'll be a Princess Anne link. There'll be a Bayside link, okay? And if you're not familiar what district you are, please get up with us before you leave so we let you know. Um, and what you'll do is you'll click on that link. There will be one um, shift per unit. They will one be shift, right? um, one, four, one four hour shift or one. What do we do? I don't know. What did you do? Come to the training board. Well, we will. We'll, we'll, put it up, we'll, we'll put post clear instructions when we post. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, when so we good job. Uh, 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 when we like what time on June fifth are you expecting? Six o'clock. School has uh, cat testing that day, so six o'clock in the evening. Six o'clock. We had to do it so everybody um, for it, so. We will clarify whether it's one shift yeah, or we, one day, um, and we will post clear instructions on that at that time. Yeah. Um, but also on the Facebook page. Oh, so it'll, it'll be in the Facebook thing. group and it will be just a post with links to sign up genius. And then each of those sign up geniuses will be for the locations to actually go and choose your slot. Mm -hmm. Andrew, that means not four slots for you. <laughs> and so that's uh, so if one shift on June. 5th, I don't know what you're talking about. June 12th. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so on the 5th, we're going to. Um, on the 5th, we're going to release where everybody can choose one. And then on the 12th, we're going to open up the things that are remaining um, for you to choose a second one. But we want to make sure everybody gets a fair shot at, at getting a first one. It's a first come, first serve. So, so who has access to do to sign up? Like, who has to sign up? Is it anybody from our group or um, and just the 
anyone from your unit can choose as long as you guys coordinate amongst each other. Um, it's going to be a public facing link, so anybody can look at it, but just coordinate like if you're not available at six o'clock, but someone else in your unit is, they can sign up for you. Um, just make sure that the unit number is listed on there because um, the district kernels manage all those links and they are going to be looking for duplicates um, just to make sure that everyone's gotten a fair shot. And they will have to have access to that Facebook page too to get that link. So. Are we doing it? We're we doing may email we too. may post it on the website as well. Okay, but it'll definitely be on Facebook. Just to mention as far as attachments in the file um, thing on the Facebook group has all 700s incentive list oh, and perfect. everything. Okay. So, so feel free to grab that one and, and edit it. Also on Tidewater Council website. Um, how many are you familiar with that website? OK, practicing. that's the actual council website that says all the district people and FOS and everything you want to know about Tidewater Council. Basically, uh, if you go to that, and you hit menu, you go to popcorn and then you go to the popcorn year that will have all of our resources on there. OK, we'll make sure that that's in the training, too, so you know how to navigate that. And if you have any important questions, don't call Pam. Call Allison. There's <laughs> still link right here for the. Oh, there you go. It's what I was indicating. Okay, yeah. But definitely feel free to call Pam. <laughs> <laughs> so popcorn at Tidewater or TWC Help Desk. Uh, dot raise a ticket dot com. That goes ahead and gets a message to Allison if you have a specific question. Um, um having a problem with. The website for some reason that should go to her because then she gets up with uh, Pegatonica on that. The most valuable thing about the email address is that's what we use for transfers. Um, it's a ticketing system, so it allows us to make sure that both units have agreed that they transferred something um, before we start changing invoices. So. In conclusion, the amount of sales required is based off of a working budget. And there's a website. Um, help unload shipment when you can. Hold a kickoff party. Taster's choice, always a good thing. Um, start early, manage your inventory, diversify your selling strategy, and communicate, communicate, communicate. If you need help, seriously call us. Um, if, if one of us doesn't have the answer, they do. Um, but hopefully, you know, you, we have a lot of resources. Um, I've been district colonel now. This is going on my second year because Pam's like, hey, you got a lot of energy. Do it. I was like, uh, uh, OK. okay. <laughs> Were so you volunteer too? Done, look really sluggish around me. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's volunteer too. So, but we're always volunteer. Um, no, but it's it's cool. It's fun. Um, You'll do great. So one of the things that came to me <laughs> last year was a unit said, I've got $1,500 worth of product. I don't know what to do with it. That's good information for, for me to have. That's good information for your district colonel to have because there are other people coming to them saying, I need this. And so then we've got a person to point them in the right direction. It's also good to have it on the Facebook page. Um, but sometimes not everybody's looking on Facebook they're just kind of like what do i do and so that's why just staying in communication with your district colonel we will help you as much as we can but the more information we have the better we can help you okay so don't hesitate to reach out to them um to me too that's fine um but we're just you know we're here to help in any way we can so can you tell me more about where we're not allowed to sell um canifest <laughs> I was going to say, the, club, no dispensaries, yep. I, mean, I got that, but. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> so the one question that came up was, you know, about um, like the distilleries around the area. Mm -hmm. uh, the word that came down from council is if they sell food there, then it is okay. But so I will say this too. But I'm also gonna, daytime hours. Yeah. Like, I'm, you yeah. Know, you don't want to, you can be outside a restaurant that has a bar, but you don't want to be outside of a bar after dark with young kids. Yeah. So <laughs> the whole thing for me is, yeah, I like every opportunity for us to sell, you know, but the number one thing that comes to mind is, is it safe for the kids to be there? Okay. The clientele that's coming in and out of that, 
that business, are they going to be saying something to your kids that's going to affect them? So, you know, if in doubt, reach out to us if you have any questions, but you know the area, you know if it's safe, you know the hours that it's safe. Um, so just use that guidance with that. But, you know, no CBD places, no strip clubs. We'll just give you that. And, you know, uh, I um, yeah. I don't need to go to so those are on there because we used to manage Wawa and last year they gave us a blanket no. They don't want to hear from anybody. Um, we may reach out to them again and see if that's changed because that was something that kind of changed during COVID. Um, Home Depot in Virginia has given us a blanket no. Um, I've heard that some of the North Carolina units had good relationships with the Home Depot there and were able to coordinate that. Um, so those are just ones we know from experience have said no. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, last year, we had the food lions were coordinated um, actually by another council through Food Lion Corporate. So they got every food lion basically in the country. Um, have not heard yet if they've been able to do that yet or not. So I would say feel free to reach out now. And if that changes, then we'll let you know about signups for that. So Wawa was a no the last time I checked. But if you do know somebody like a manager and they're willing to let you go for it. You know. Yeah, a lot of time, you know, on the council level, we're, we'll work through corporate, but a lot of times if you know somebody who works there, if you're friends with a manager, they may do some a favor for you that corporate will say no. One thing I do want to mention as far as selling popcorn goes, and this was something that was just kind of clarified this year, but, you know, um, if you have anything else that you're trying to sell with your unit, like if you're selling meat sticks or something else, with the popcorn, we cannot... Uh, have any other products that we are selling at the same time as the popcorn. So when you're selling, doing a popcorn stand, it's just solely popcorn. Um, I think back in the day, I think we did popcorn and meat six at the same time, but I didn't know any difference. So, you know, um, but I do know now. So I just want to put that out there. Um, Why is that? Just curious. It's just something that they put in the contract with us. I think they just don't want any sales to be taken away that could possibly go towards popcorn. You know, like for instance, if we had, Camp cards going at the same time. Some people might rather get camp cards. Oh, it's the, the contract with the popcorn with the vendor. Popcorn. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I think that we didn't talk a lot about because we will at the next training is donations. Um, you cannot solicit donations. If you accept donations, those are military donations. So you are earning a 40% commission, just like any other sale. And then that popcorn goes to um, give product to the local USO. Um, so just make sure that you're reporting all of your donations as well. And then your, your scouts are still earning commissions and still earning prizes. So what that means on our end is at the end of the season, when you're able to bring a return back, um, all these military donations help offset that. So when there's fifty thousand dollars coming back in returns, say we get seventy thousand dollars in military donations, that helps us keep our forty percent going because we are doing a really good management of the popcorn. We've had years past that we've been looking at a lot of popcorn, um, and then we realize that um, these donations can go towards prizes. So that helps because your kids will still get prizes. It goes towards popcorn. It goes towards the troops. So it's it's really a good option for us. So does that make sense? Yeah. Any other hmm. questions? So if if somebody said here, here's a ten dollar donation for you because okay. you're cute in your uniform, then they can either buy like a $10 bucket of popcorn and keep it, or it goes to military donations. But yeah. Wait, so, you're saying, so you're saying if it's a cash donation, they say, hey, we don't want to buy popcorn, here's 10 bucks. Right. So that has to be recorded as a military donation. Correct. All donations are military donations. Why would that donations. be recorded as a cash donation to the organization? It is against Boy Scouts of America policy for units to take donations. Um, so all of those are. So we so, so, so we to be clear, a unit cannot take a cash donation. They have to buy pop. You will report it as a ten dollar donation. You will keep four dollars, and then the council will fulfill the product. No, I, I understand, but the 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 consumer thinks that they're giving the unit one thing, but then they're doing something else. Because 
with it instead. That doesn't seem. No, well, I mean, they'll they'll say, oh, no, this is for you and be like, oh, it's mil any donation we get. It's a military. Donation. So you have to let them know that, hey, we're going to buy popcorn with this. This is not going to the unit. Yeah, it goes toward like all the donations. It's for popcorn for the military. They, they get it through the USO. There's no price point for the donation. So it could be a two dollar donation, it could be a five dollar donation at the end of the which day. is aggregated all together. Which is just a way for us to write off the leftover popcorn we have at the end. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. I just want you to know how we do it on our ends. You don't wonder, you know, where's this going to or whatever, because that is. Well, at I the end, it's, it's kind of like, are we going to have enough coming, you know, with. I just like, I know for me personally, like, or and a lot of people, when yeah. they donate money, they're like, hey, I don't want the popcorn. Right. And I just want my $10 to go to you. Right. So. They're handing you ten dollars, but we need to be clear with them. Like you're not giving us ten dollars; you're giving us four dollars, and then six dollars is going to buy popcorn, which is going to go towards the pedophilic or trail. There's really going to be time for that conversation, though. Usually, they're just handing cash and saying, "Here, here's a donation." And usually, I just say, "Okay, the donations are used to buy popcorn for the military." I don't really get into like. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry. I was, we have a sign too that used to go on the table. I also wasn't aware that. Uh, Boys Scouts didn't take cash donations. We do take cash donations, oh. just not for the individual the use. Boy Scouts, right? Yes. Yeah. That's a whole different. Yeah, the thing. Scouts cannot take donate, like the individual Scouts. They can donate by card. They can donate by cash, but it will go towards the military and the child. Both. Does that make sense? They get credit. Yes. I understand. Yeah, but I understand what you're saying. They think the whole hundred percent is going towards the rest out. The my understanding is Girl Scouts works the same way. They do. They also donate to the same USO that we do. Mm -hmm. Oh, they do. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, they send all their Girl Scout cookies to an Air Force base. Is my yeah. They they work through the um the USO of Hampton Roads in Central Virginia, just like yeah, we when do. The guard was at the Capitol for the riots. There was lots of Girl Scout cookies there. Um, I know my pack. I mean, every donation, the, the, it, it's split. However, their money gets split, their donations get split. They get the, the, the scout gets their portion and it just gets split. You're, you're still getting your, the scout's still earning their money towards their prizes and everything else. Hecatonica is getting their cut. It's and, and it doesn't honestly. It doesn't matter if you if you claim zero donations, you're only hurting yourself because you're not helping out the USO, who is here to. That's they're here to help us. That's actually the military is going to be some of your biggest mm -hmm. donations and your biggest sales and fellow scouters. So Eagle, Eagle Scouts, 100 bucks and popcorn yeah. like that. Easy. So, you know, a military guy, he knows that he's making the donations, but it's going to go back and help the military. It's kind of a win, too, you know. They'll sit there and have a 20 to 30 minute conversation. Yeah. Dude, I was an Eagle Scout. What? And that's the biggest thing for a little a little mm -hmm. boy. I don't know. I don't know the girl's end of it because I have a boy. But he's like, you were? When did you? What did you do? How did you do? And then what that does is it plants a seed and it makes them go, okay, I want to be an Eagle Scout because you know what the, that did that helped that that man do X, Y, and Z to help him in the military. But when you have the order form, it'll have a spot on there that says military donation. Um, so definitely use that when you're talking to people about your donations will support troops locally. So it's my first year doing it. I'm trying to step up and help out my pack. How do I avoid stepping on other people's toes? I'm in sales for a living. I have military connections. I don't want to get a little great because I know the next manager and like someone else has already done that. You know, like I'm not trying to. Hey man, I wouldn't worry about it. I would step on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> like, so my pack, used oh, to my pack for years. Got the medium, my I? pack for years had bows. Like that was our primary location for selling popcorn. We sold every Saturday and Sunday, and council didn't didn't care when they took it and gave it out to everybody else. 
So like, don't worry about others. If they're not there first, if they're, they're not first, scheduled, if there's no being scheduled, then you know. Just you, make sure you got a paper trail. Yeah. Because yeah. What, it, what it comes down to, so, okay, so here's the. Two units showing up at the same time. Okay. Which looks bad, and then, then somebody's losing count. So. so, say for instance, two units show up the same day, they both have paper, right? Confirming. So what do you do then? Absolutely. You have fun. You split it. You could do that. Yeah. You could also <laughs> you could also go with like okay, splitting's like the most ideal thing to do. You have one person that shows up with paper and the other person doesn't, but they said I talked to Ted over at so and so. Okay. He's got a date on there that says March that he got it confirmed. The other person just needs to step away. Okay. Because you didn't get the paperwork. And sometimes and, you know, I've gone around and around with some, you know, of the managers and been like, I just really need paperwork. You know, can I just get a confirmation of the state? And and sometimes you have to almost tackle them to get it, you know. But um, that is when it comes down to it, if there is a double booking for some reason, that's the way you're going to go ahead and, and win that battle, you know. Just go shopping for two hours and come back. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've had, some, I've had some units that have really worked well together and they split the shift and like, Yes, great job. And I've had some units going, you know, like full on wrestling with one another, you know, and those are the locations we've almost lost. So I had to come into a tractor supply company and, uh, you know, there were multiple units and it was more than one manager handing out dates. And I actually the next season just scheduled them. You know, you guys pick a date, you guys pick a date, and everybody had the schedule and it worked out beautifully. I didn't want to do that, but I didn't want to lose the tractor supply company either because they're very good, you know, supports for us. So, so we we do ask that you stay inside of council boundaries. Um, so we ask the units from Suffolk not to come into Chesapeake, and on the same token, we ask the units from Chesapeake not to go into Suffolk because that is a different council. Um, so it's a different market. It's a different product they're selling. They don't use the same vendor as us. Um, if you are not sure about where to book show and sells, talk to your district colonel. Um, tell them some of your ideas and they might know. You know, if I said to Krista, I was like, oh, I really want to go to next. She's like, oh, you know, this unit already has it booked because I've talked to them too um, or anything like that. So um, definitely whichever district you're in, a lot of times the district colonels know where other units are selling from having those conversations with them as well. Questions about the Suffolk thing. Yes. So my unit is right there on the border where um just speak square area. Um so how does how does that work? So does that include like North Suffolk as well? That Lowe's that's right there on the Portsmouth Boulevard, that's still like Chesapeake, right? Portsmouth Boulevard yeah, is that. us. Um so that'll be one that we have booked that'll be coming out. Um, so the the official ruling that we got from our scout executive talking to other scout executives, um, you can sell in your own neighborhood wherever you live. If you want to go talk to your next door neighbor, go for it. You know, if you want to take your order form wherever you work, go for it. But don't set up show and sells in another council. So Chesapeake, Portsmouth, those are fine, um, but try to stay out of Suffolk. Hampton, Newport News. Hampton, Newport News. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this can I talk about cinnamon? Sure. Go for okay. It. So like last year we had <laughs> and, mint, and this year we're getting cinnamon. And so when they're exclusive to us, that means Suffolk doesn't have it. Hampton Newport News doesn't have it. So that means you can go over the bridge. You're not going to get it. It's exclusive to us. So that's why we can go. You're not going to go anywhere else to get it. You're only going to get it here. So those are also you can use those as little selling points. You said cinnamon. Oh, cinnamon roll. Oh, yes. Is there any like cinnamon toast countries? Oh, it's like a it's like a churro. Oh, that's oh. beyond. It's so good. It's so good. This is the best. Oh, yeah, it's really good. So, but we can't let you know the other secrets. You have to do the training for that. But there's, there's a lot of new stuff. That's the only one I really love. Kind of things coming back into the inventory again that we've retired for a bit. Yeah, so well, it'll be good. It'll be a good selling year. So, we have one more question. Absolutely. When we were talking about like offloading the trucks, yes. How many is like a minimum to be able to um, help? 
Like one, one one person, um, awesome. but you don't get to start taking stuff until the last truck is unloaded. There'll be like three trucks. And the and the first is. order last year was three trucks, and then each of the subsequent ones I think was just one. And you'll have a popcorn from that wall out to about okay. here ish and here ish and no, all the way around. All the way around. All the way around. If you have little kids, I would say probably what age and above can help. Or two can help. My huh? two year old needs to help. <laughs> So what do we say? I think we normally say what? Almost to the roof. I think we said like 14 and up or something, you know, because we don't want to be stepping on littles or having them get smushed by popcorn. Um, and we have um, we have the uh, we have pallet jacks and we have yeah, a board left. Stuff um, so, them, so no kids that are not going to be able to be aware and safe around right. the machinery. Right. And we can't just leave them in the car. <laughs> That's what like Chris just said. <laughs> We were I know. In the car. <laughs> 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 this is Tony, by the way, for those who don't know, he's the creator of Popcorn 101 um, because he didn't have that when he was a popcorn colonel. He said, how do we teach these people? We need a class. So every year he makes it a little bit better. So do you want to field any questions? Yeah, we have a question. So here. We have to take it. So go ahead. Um, is, this, is there a level below this where I can go for more information? Because I am clueless about everything that has to do with popcorn. Oh. What district are you in? Uh, I think Three Rivers. What's your unit number? 259. Okay. Um, so Beth and Rudy are not here. Um, you can definitely talk to either one of them. Um, or you can talk to any of these three lovely people. you want to go people. back to that slide? Maybe Will this training also be available? We are recording it, so our plan is to post it on the web page. So your your people are over on the right side. Who else doesn't know their district? Does anybody else know their district? Yeah. Everybody knows? Tom, what's your district? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so definitely feel free to reach out to them. Um, like she said, Tony like invented this training, so I'm sure he'd be happy to go over any level of detail that's needed that for hours. Does anybody else have anything? Thank you, Sarah. Tony. <laughs> All right, so get on the Facebook page. Send me a request. Okay, awesome. Nice. Okay. Um, Go to the Tidewater Council page. You just type in Tidewater Council Boy Scouts. They'll bring you to the page. And then go under Menu and Popcorn, and you can kind of see where those things are going to come in. And once we get the training up and going in July, make sure you sign up for that. Um, and all those resources will make sure it goes to that website. Okay? So we um, try to give you every, all the tools you need to, to have a really successful um, popcorn season. I've never passed before. I've done it for the sports. Okay, and for those online, we're going to go ahead and log off, but definitely feel free to contact us if you have any questions.